I work at MSU Matrix on the Enslave project, and I help with data integration into enslave.org, and I'm also the managing editor of the about to be launched Journal of Slavery and Data Preservation. Um, unfortunately, Kyleen can't actually be here today. A last minute emergency came up, which is a shame because it means I have to present her portion, and I'm sure she would have done a better job than me, but we'll, I'll have to do for today. Um, and before I dive in, uh, I'm at my apartment, and if my cat starts yelling, I'm just gonna have to grab her real quick and hold her during the presentation um, so that she doesn't disrupt us. So uh, uh, what, what I'm hoping to cover in the next couple of minutes is um, a brief like prehistory of the project and sort of the then like the intervention that Enslaved is hoping to make in the world of, of data on uh, in historic slavery and enslaved people in the slave trade. And I'll talk a little bit about our people focused approach to all this and um, sort of how enslaved.org might be utilized and something about how um, the data integration and data model side of things works. And then I'll move on to the portion that Kyleen was planning on presenting which uh, is the Journal of Slavery and Data Preservation, which is basically the sister site to enslaved.org. And um, I'll say a couple things about that, and then that's, the, that's what I have for today. Uh, so, um, just one second. So yeah, so I mean, so the, obviously the study and the sort of recovering of stories of enslaved people and genealogical work, uh, work has been going on for a long time. But in the past few decades, um, sort of the focus on digital data sets and databases related to historic slavery has uh, picked up momentum. In the 70s and 80s, the Slave Voyages data set, which is this enormous and um, Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't know. So I'm going to show some stuff in a, in a, in a moment. Thanks. Um, that, uh, that project kind of went, got underway in the 70s and 80s. This big, <laughs> this big uh, data set, um, Louisiana Slave Database, made by Gwendolyn Midlow Hall, was um, collected and digitized in the 80s and 90s. That covers like all of lower Louisiana. Various genealogical projects like Family Search and lots of independent genealogists and sort of community scholars have been collecting data on enslaved people. And, um, but basically, uh, a lot of these data sets are, I mean, some of them are not even like digitized, like a story will have a picture of a register, or um, some of them are digitized, but they're not online. Uh, and, the ones that are online are often uh, wonderful and has super rich and, and, and great, but uh, they're all siloed or they're generally all siloed. They're all structured differently. There's not really a set of best practices. And if you wanted to search across multiple data sets, it's a little bit difficult. So this is where Enslaved comes in or the Enslaved project comes in. Uh, we received a grant from the Mellon Foundation in 2017 and uh, our, what we're hoping to do is build a centralized hub at enslaved.org that all of these diverse uh, data sets can connect to so that uh, a user can do federated searches across many different data sets. This makes it easier to do family history, uh, genealogical research, um, like more sophisticated statistical analysis, um, these sort of things. And I will pull up um, this is the, uh, I'm going to pull this up, the, it's the beta version of stuff, but it's, this is just to get an idea of what the website will look like. Um, and we're, we're, we're going to do a soft launch in the next couple of months, and then the URL will be in slave.org. So our approach to this is uh, really focused around people. Uh, hey, Duncan. We want to be a tool in discovering life. That, yeah. We are not seeing the um, samples that we're seeing, some text boxes. Oh. 
Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, wait. Can you see it now? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Weird. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for the heads up. Um, so, uh, so it, we built the model and our whole book is built around people, um, we're all including other people in enslaved.org, owners, people that um, were involved in the economy around the slave trade, basically is anyone, any individual connected to the slave trade. And we're using a, a linked open data approach, um, which is basically a set of best practices for structuring data on the web. And I, there's more to say about linked open data, but for now I'm going to move on. The other objectives of the project, which I'll talk about more in the journal side of things, is develop best practices and workflow, encourage scholarly recognition for data set publication. Oh, it went away again? No, it's back now. It's back now. Oh. That's okay. I'm not changing anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it, just let me know if it goes away again, because that's very strange, but okay. Um, and so, yeah, develop scholarly recognition for data set publication, and then develop a model for preservation and sustainability, which I'm sure that last one is familiar to lots of people on here in digital humanities. So, Right now, as of today, I have uh, 400,000 items in what will become the live site. This, this one is a little bit, um, it hasn't been updated since we've been doing uh, ingestion. So you'll see it says like closer to 300,000. But that's 400,000 basically instances of individuals, uh, instances of like, unique events. So that could be a single register or a single estate inventory, a single sale or a runaway or a birth or a baptism. These are all sorts of events we have. And, uh, or it could be instances of places or sources that everything is drawn from. And how one might use and say that org is for some of the people that I about, but say want to, um, you, you maybe it's like you some you're interested in doing family history and you know someone um, generations ago named Joaquim was captured and brought to um, Brazil. So you, uh, for instance, this is this would be a, ba a pretty basic search um, on save.org and see we have this is a keyword search. It's pretty expansive. With have 45,000 people that hit hits if you were the keyword Joaquim Brazil. That's not necessarily they're all named Joaquim, but um, that's something you could do in advanced search. But just uh, for basic search, here we go. You can see there's, there's these Joaquims. They have um, person status, which is a vocabulary we developed to capture like relationship to slavery. So people could filter on the left by, um, I want to actually only see the owners um, and of course that's like temporally bound because someone could be enslaved and then freed and then an owner for instance um, and then uh, if we went to this one like this example here we can see he was uh, this person was recorded at this um, plantation and some of this stuff is a little bit uh, a little bit funky still but just to, for demonstration purposes <laughs> we're we're checking it out so this Joaquim, you can see on the bottom here, is associated to one event that is actually an inventory. Um, and if we wanted to explore the inventory, we could go to there. And then actually, once this loads, we can see there all the other enslaved people counted at that inventory. And we can see the date and, and time of that inventory. And um, yeah, so you can, well, it's having a little bit of a hard time loading, but we'll try reloading real quick and I'll, I'll move on for now. So, I mean, that was a pretty pretty straightforward like search and, and filter and browse use of Enslaved.org, but 
as, as uh, we continue developing things, we're incorporating visualizations and um, more sophisticated stuff in advanced search and, um, and things like that. So for a glimpse into sort of like the, yeah, well, it's not loading right now, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, can people see this diagram now? It does seem to be lagging and your connection um, isn't great. So if you want to, oh, now it's coming up to on the screen. So. If you, okay. Okay, so do you see the diagram now? Yes. Okay, cool, thank you. Sorry about the funny connection. So this is, um, before I move on to talk about the journal, this is um, sort of a, the full picture of the different parts of the enslaved project. What I was showing you, we kind of refer to as the enslaved hub, which you can see is up in the middle on the left. But the, the process starts over here on the right with these project names, voyages, slave biographies, freedom narratives. And um, what these projects do is they contribute a data set. And this could be any sort of date, like this could be genealogical, uh, data or um, we've had already a lot of like con community contributors that like kind of just been doing independent research and want to connect to enslave.org but we get a data set and it goes um, a copy of that data set will live at the journal and it's sort of like an untouched copy along with metadata and I'll say a little bit more about the journal in a second and then this this big box on the bottom is sort of our, our uh, software package of how we do data transformation and uh, integration into enslaved.org. And that involves mapping onto our fields, et cetera. And then it goes through it, it, then quick statements, writes it into our triple store, which we use wiki based. These are all just like pieces of software. And then uh, the searching and browsing is available at the, the hub, which is enslaved.org. Um, and again, there's, I mean, there's, I could say more about all these pieces and I'm happy to answer lots of other questions either now or, or by email later. Um, but uh, for now, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to move on to talk about the journal, which this is the part that Kyleen was hoping to present for all of you all, but um, I will read something of, the, of what she wrote. So, uh, the journal is called uh, the Journal of Slavery and Data Preservation, and it's our first issue we're planning to release in April of this year. Uh, it's, an, a, it's a digital open access academic journal that publishes original peer reviewed data sets about the lives of enslaved Africans and their descendants. One of the things that makes the journal unique is that it collects and publishes curated data sets that are based off of documents produced between the fifth century and the early 20th century. These data sets represent an individual's work to collect, digitize, and interpret the information that they have gathered. And unlike more traditional publications, the data sets themselves are the featured items in the journal. So they're not supplementary to an article, they're the article itself. Uh, so the, the Larger Enslaved Project recognizes the difficulty in gaining scholarly recognition for the collection and curation of data sets related to the Atlantic slave trade so one of the central goals of the Journal of Slavery and Data Preservation is to elevate curated data to first class publication status by providing scholarly review, recognition, and academic credit to those who undertake the intellectual work involved in generating, standardizing, and describing digital records related to historic bondage and freedom in Africa and the diaspora. Similar to traditional journal publications, all the data sets submitted to the journal are peer reviewed by an editorial board comprised of experts in the field, and then they're published. We also are uh, exploring an option of like editorial review, so something equivalent to like a book review that doesn't go through the full peer review process. Uh, so, and that how it's how uh, the journal is related to enslaved.org is uh, the journal focuses on publishing peer reviewed data sets and editorial reviews of projects and, uh, and data sets. 
while enslave.org acts as an interactive searchable repository for that data. So the version of the data set that's published on the journal, it just lives there and it's untouched and it's like the original version. But when we integrate it into enslave.org, we, for instance, only take some fields. We don't take, we, like our data model can't accompany like every single type of data related to slavery and enslaved people. Um, for instance, uh, we're not currently capturing price, which is a topic of, that people are really interested in this field, but um, we just had, we, we had to scope our project in certain ways. So if you wanted to just learn about like different prices related to sale events, you would have to go to the journal and pull out that yourself. Whereas at enslave.org, we're capturing all these other fields like occupation, ethnicity, uh, relationships, roles, these sort of things. Um, and that's, uh, that also involves a process of standardization and um, mapping onto our, our control vocabulary and these sort of things. Um, so yeah, but the, the two are connected in this way and they'll be like directly linked together. Uh, and like I said, the journal is hoping to launch its first issue in uh, April and we have the next couple issues planned out and are, and are working on those. And um, by way of wrapping up, because I'm almost at time. Um, oh, nice. Two minute warning. So uh, some of the challenges that uh, we've been uh, facing and trying to overcome related to the journal um, are, I think, familiar to, again to many of you all. Um, this question about preservation and sustainability. Um, we're, we're grant funded right now and there's uh, like we're planning on doing this project in the long term but what does it look like um, what does long-term preservation look like we're exploring a relationship with dataverse that could maybe host copies of our data sets that we publish um, another another challenge is uh, it's a bit it's a bit of a new thing the way we're approaching like publishing data sets as articles so uh, we have to kind of develop workflows that are intuitive and make sense to the contributors and also the peer reviewers. And um, that's going, it's going well, but it just re involves reflection and along the way. And, and, um, and then uh, as far as uh, challenges related to the data integration and transformation and standardization side of things, it, it's taking longer than we thought to, to do this process. We're doing it like uh, we have, like I said, over 400,000 items in currently, but the just data sets are, they're so varied and they're in different uh, uh, levels of standardization and cleanliness and to sort of transform them into how we're thinking our model, which involves like breaking apart kind of people and events and identifying them as distinct and, uh, Sometimes, depending on how the data set is structured, that's that's uh, a puzzle that's hard to crack. But um, but we're figuring out ways to do it. And then uh, the last thing I'll say is that I'm again I'm happy to answer. This was like just I don't know a brief overview of where we're at with the project, and I can answer any other questions. My email is tardunk at msu.edu. So T A R R UNC at msu.edu and then the project is uh, slave.org at GU. Thank you everyone.